Well, hello my friends. Welcome back. Today, this truck's got tons of spirit and personality. It's a 1949 Chevrolet 5-window 3100 half-ton short bed pickup, which we just call the Thriftmaster Derelict. Truck is original paint, or what's left of it. We ceramic cleared it to give it some nice added protection. And as always, you know, the underside was media blasted to raw metal, then thoroughly caulked, etched, primed, and sealed. And then the heat cured polyurea on the underside, all body panels, and on the inside floor of the cabin and back wall. Copious layers of Dynamats pretty much everywhere, and it really helps quiet it down. Other than wind noise, these trucks really weren't designed to do 90, 100, so on the way over here, doing about 90 on the freeway, you do get some wind noise. We add in rubber wherever we can to help that, but, well, we're just not magicians, and it is what it is. What it is, is a sports car masquerading as an old farm truck might be the ultimate ranch truck in my opinion give you enough ground clearance to party on around the property but also hop on the highway and skittle on down to town under the radar which is the best these days let's admit it where we're at culturally it's nice to be unique but it's also nice not to be captain bling we're running the LS3 E-Rod by General Motors, so that's about 440 horse. Aluminum fuel injected 6.2 liters of American greatness. We're putting power through to a Tramec six-speed manual. Thank you, Jesus. Four-wheel independent suspension, Hydro Boost assisted Icon Brembo brakes adjustable coilovers. With each client, we talk them through it. There's tons of choices that get made, including this stance. This is the most moderate and kind of my personal favorite default stance, so it doesn't really look altered or slammed. Dying to do a four-wheel drive version, though. We keep the headlights old school and under the radar, so those are LED, but they look like a classic glass lens light. The turn signals are LED, but pretty subtle. Tail lights on this one, we left the stock style, but aged them down. Again, upgraded them to an LED circuit board. We have no reverse camera, but we do have one hell of a stereo system. So we're running the Focal K2 speakers through a digital sound processor, and then it's Bluetooth dependent. So you run what you brung, but we gave you a nice, beautiful little knob on the dash so there's a little thumb wheel that's for the bass adjustment otherwise a is for audio and you just rotate it to control volume and that's it the seats made for us by our friends at glide so you've got that fold down center armrest and then the seat bottom articulates up and you get to see command center where all of our electronics are housed all the way through to all your fuse panels everything you're ever going to need to interface with but it's a really nice use of what was otherwise going to be wasted dead space. Of course, you have three-point seat belts for the driver and the passenger, and then there is a lap belt in the middle, although you're going to be playing with their crotch when you're shifting that six-speed, so deal with it. For the wood in the bed, on this one we went with this lovely Brazilian cherry which seemed to pick up the tones in the patina paint really nicely. So it's got a marine grade satin finish on it to keep the patina vibe. And then we acid etched all of the new stainless steel rails fuel cap so it keeps it nice and chill. As well as our stainless push to release cargo hold downs that were quite nice. For the tailgate, although I was just noticing and I kind of do miss our sexy one touch Marquet drop down tailgate, but patina wins. So I handmade the client these cool little straps for the original chain with a nice lace stitch on them. This is crafted in bison and that is picked up on the magical interior. You'll notice a pretty sharp contrast on the interior. A lot of times, for some reason, that original semi-gloss sort of copper finish on these Chevy truck interiors, they don't really patina. They just kind of go away. And you're left with kind of a 
dirty, funky, raw interior. So in this case, we talked to the client about that and he agreed we should go ahead and go balls out on the interior. So we did a full old school style resto of the interior. We color coordinated his old school icon gauges by Dakota Digital in the materials and colors used. The paint on the dash steering column and doors is actually the Porsche chalk white, which is kind of neutral, but plays well with this lovely French black bison and all of our machine stainless bits and pieces. So um, leather wrapped in bison as well. Uh, hand stitch the steering wheel, which is the old Tri-5 reduced diameter style. And then of course it's got power windows, power door locks, and all that good stuff. For the carpets, we did our favorite often used Hargarten square weave black wool, again hemmed in bison. We tinted the windows. That's a really nice 3M ceramic tint and it's pretty moderate, but helps keep the temperature down on the inside. Original gas fill. That's now your hide a key when you're going surfing. Because our gas tank, of course, is located over there. So I think most of you already know my son, Nash, is our design engineer. I think he conspired with the Thriftmaster build team, pulled a fast one on me, but I kind of dig it. What do you guys think? They went ahead and did these little 3D printed numbered identification tags hiding on the A-pillar on both sides. What do you think? Is that lame or should we keep doing it? I'm not so sure. Of course, we did do the derelict badges, as always, on the exterior. Pretty much always put them in the same spot on the Thrift Masters. It just seemed to work well right in that area, back of the front fender. And you may ask, where oh, where is the lizard? Well, there is the lizard. We decided he'd work nice there. So he's in the shade, gets plenty of view. He's just hanging. Force aerospace grade wiring harness with absolutely no piers on four wheels. Probably some fighter jets, sexier harnesses. So in the bay, in the spirit of the refinished interior, we decided to go ahead and make it all pretty. So again, Porsche chalk color. Uh, the layout is as you're used to seeing it from us with the HydroTech HydroBoost Assist, Willwood Master, six pot Brembos in the front, four pot in the rear, dedicated electric parking brake, all stainless steel CAD cam plumbing, all stainless exhaust. It's a dual bridged exhaust system. And then, of course, all AeroQuip plumbing and hardware and everything. No uh, kind of BS plastic OEM clamps to be found. Oh, I don't know if I pointed these out. You guys, we started running these nice gas shocks for the hood. They work really well. We designed those ourselves. There were a couple available in the aftermarket, but they were all a little bit, oh, kind of China fantastic. So we made our own because that's how we rock. Not sure what's up with this. In fact, I don't think this is correct for the truck. Anyone know what vehicle that is off of? The radius at the rear isn't quite right for the trim, but hey, it's been on the truck for decades. Who am I to judge and to move it? So we kept it. I think that uh, pretty much covers it. If you're curious to know more, there are 24 or more other videos on the Thrift Master series. We really appreciate your time and attention and please spread the word, like it, share it, subscribe it, whatever, do something, all support matters. We are, after all, a small mom and pop business, big mouth, small business. Thanks again for your energy. Be well, see you next week or so.